What is the scariest true story y'all have heard or told? I have told this story before. I am an eye doctor, and I had a patient come to me with an infected eyelid two other eye doctors tried to treat and failed. They were dumping all sorts of medicine into it and it was not getting any better. At this point, it was swollen and painful for weeks with no improvement despite being on tons of meds. Apparently, neither of them thought to flip the lid upside down, you know that gross trick some kids do with their upper eyelids. It was a painful maneuver for her very swollen eyelid, which might explain it. Anyhow, there appeared to be what looked like a visible abscess inside the tissue with thick gooey material, I thought I'd give it a nudge, and saw it move. This was not an abscess, it was something else. I managed to remove it quite easily in one whole piece. It was a fly larva. The patient told me that she had a bug hit her in the eye a few days before she got this urine uh, 30 or no. I removed the lava, and within two days the wound closed, and she was 100% recovered on basic antibiotic eye drops. Yes, I do have the photos from this case for those interested. TLDR, patient had a bug lay an egg in her eyelid, and I removed the lava. The story of John Edward Jones getting stuck in Nutty Putty Cave in Utah. He became wedged in the tight crawl when he took a wrong turn in the cave system. Rescuers could do nothing to get him out, and he was stuck in there for 28 hours before he died from cardiac arrest because feet were above his head and his heart was pumping over time. One of the rescuers even gave him a phone to call his wife and talk to his young daughter before he died. This thread is probably dead now, but when I was about 4 and my brother 11, we stayed at my aunt's between moving house. Her neighbor had a son my brother's age. So my bro used to go play with him on weekends etc. One day my brother goes over after lunch. The dad opens the door, says the kids and mum are out shopping, but come on in and have some juice and tell him about how the move is going. My bro goes in, has a drink and a chat, then comes back to my aunt's after no more than an hour. A few days later police are all over the place. Turns out the dad murdered his wife and kids, and was in the middle of burying them in the back garden around the time my brother knocked. Crazy to think what could be different if my brother had visited a couple of hours before, or caught that guy on an off day. This happened with my sister-in-law when she was about 11 or 12. Her and her family lived in a trailer park, just down the street, was her bus stop for school. Each morning, she would see a man in his trailer taking pictures of her and her friends. It creeped her out, so she went to tell her mom, my mother-in-law, of what this guy was doing, and how he would just stand in the window staring at them and taking pictures. So, her mom calls the police and report him. The police didn't do anything. This went on for about another two weeks with no action from the police to where now my sister-in-law is terrified to stand and wait for the school bus and her mom had to call the police again. This time, the police actually arrived at this pervert's house and lo and behold, the police find a wall covered in pictures of my sister-in-law, some of the other neighborhood little girls and some child porn. Her and the other families watched from afar with this guy cuffed up and being escorted to the police cruiser. I had brain surgery roughly 3 years ago. I lost my concept of time. What felt like 4 months was only 3 days. The amount of physical, mental, and emotional pain I went through was crazy. I had to find all of my memories and relearn how to walk, talk, everything. If you want to go through something terrifying that is it. Off the main road of a place I used to work at, a guy decided to climb under a bus to a a hitcher free reader. Well the bus went over a speed bump, and the guy fell, and ended up getting caught on the back wheel. His body was dragged five blocks before the bus driver realized what was happening. A police officer who came into our store regularly told us that the guy was still alive when they got to him, but died an hour later. He said his whole back was scraped off exposing his spine. I remember driving down that road after the fact, and you could still see a deep red blood stain trail going on for those 5 blocks. Absolutely horrifying. 
One of our employees fell into the hammer box. This is a device filled with ultra high torque rotating hammers used to grind up large appliances into scrap metal. It apparently turned three times before the emergency shoot off was hit pulling in half the employee's body at a diagonal running from the middle of his pelvis to his shoulder. The gruesome part was that he was still alive as the pressure from the hammers was holding the enormous wound shut. Took 30 minutes for EMTs to arrive while he screamed for them to simply turn the machine back on and end it. He didn't make it. When I was much younger we lived across the street from a big family. He had a wife and five sons, and one night he brought his whole family into the living room, and lined them up, and pulled a shotgun out from under the couch, and shot himself in the head. The kids were messed up again for the rest of their lives. Short story. My wife is from Enterprise, Oregon and I guess a kid in her school got beheaded on his way home. Was literally found with his head cut off on the side of the street, and to this day no one knows who did it, or how it happened. Absolutely gives me chills. A kid from a couple towns away from me lived on a farm with his girlfriend. They were in the kitchen one night. She was cooking and him and his friend were cleaning their guns at the table. His went off and shot her killing her immediately. He then loaded up, ran outside and shot himself in the head. Walking my dog and crossing the street with a green light and a guy blows through the red light and almost hits me and the dog. I yell uh, and he slams on his brakes and turns around and pulls into parking lot ahead of me. I get closer and see the car has Illinois plates. I live in PA. He says Erica Phil who call our solar have killed Pearl Plur oh I just keep walking and he drives away. The next day I hear spree killer Andrew Cunan and used a stolen credit card at a gas station in my town 100% was him I called her asshole. One day as a kid I was exploring the forests near our house with my cousin. The forest was on a hill, but there were several craters there, because of bombs that were dropped there during the world wars, Germany. One day we saw a backpack at the bottom of one. We tried to climb down, but it was kinda steep and slippery, so we did not want to risk falling. We planned on returning later with a rope, and went home. The next day news story was that there was a backpack found with the remains of a girl in that forest. A guy walking his dog found it after the dog world had stopped barking and going crazy at the edge of the crater while staring at the backpack. We stopped exploring the forests after. Edit. English is hard s-o-m-e-t-i-m-e-s asterisk. This week in Cologne. From the wall next to Autobahn, a concrete plate fell down into ongoing traffic and hit one car, killing the driver. After the inspection, they found another six plates that weren't properly constructed, just like the one that fell down. I think the story of Tina Fey getting the scare on her face is super fucked up. She was a kid just sitting and playing in her front yard when a random guy pulled up got out of his car and slashed her face for no reason with a razor. WTF. When I was a kid we lived on a large acreage. One night we came home late and as we entered the driveway we noticed a car pulled over down the road against the ditch that bordered our property. We saw two people, one of them climbing out of the ditch. When we parked my mom told my dad to go see if they were okay or needed help. My dad said that they looked to be okay and it was probably not a good idea, so we all went in and to bed. The next morning we were woken up by the police. They had our whole yard taped off because some horseback riders had noticed a leg sticking out of a black plastic bag in the ditch exactly where that car was parked. That luck on my mom's face I'll never forget. We know for sure my dad wouldn't have made it back home alive if he had listened to my mom that night. My mother never taught me to swim because when she was a teenager she saw a friend get sucked into a whirlpool at the bottom of a drainage lake that is the deepest body of water within a few hundred miles of us. They did not find his body for days. My mom was study partners with Ted Bundy. He invited her to go to his apartment to study. A law professor pulled her aside after class and warned her that he was being investigated by the FBI. Shortly after he was arrested but escaped from prison, 
Left behind in his jail cell was my mama's name and address. Without the law professor's warning it could have turned out much differently. Last year, there was a girl named Ruth who went to University of Illinois Chicago. She was heading out from an event and was catcalled by a man who followed her into a parking garage. He killed and raped her, then just left her there. She went to a high school near me, and it breaks my heart to recall the story. Edit. Wording. One of my dad's friend's wife was murdered by some crazy dude walking down the street. This guy had just been released from a mental hospital and literally just stabbed her as she walked home. When my dad's friend came back he thought she had just taken the dogs out for a walk. So he walked along the normal walk route and he saw loads of blue lights. He was stopped by a police officer and wasn't allowed any closer until he saw that it was his wife. When I was young, I saw a documentary about a guy who got flesh-eating bacteria in his nasal cavity. It ate his face and he's still alive. Eventually they removed the bacteria by removing the eaten parts of his face. He got a prosthetic face, which back in those days, was basically a plastic Halloween mask that tried to look human. At the end of the documentary, he took the mask off. His face from his forehead down to his mouth was just a hole. Edit. It was a fungus, not bacteria, apparently.